Hello, welcome to the Sunday School Ministry of White Plains Baptist Church located in Lawrence, South Carolina, where Dr. Johnny L. Johnson Jr. is the senior pastor. My name is Tracy Gambrell Holland. I'm an associate minister and also the Sunday School Superintendent. Again, I say welcome. We are in our spring quarter 2021, Prophets Faithful to God's Covenant. Unit one, which is for the month of March, is Faithful Prophets. There are four lessons that explore the reasons prophets are necessary for Israel's history. These lessons will come from Deuteronomy, Joshua, 1 Kings, and 2 Kings. Today's lesson is focused on Elijah, a man who was used by God to confront one of Israel's most wicked kings, King Ahab, and his ruthless wife, Jezebel. Today's lesson, March 28, 2021, Elijah, prophet of courage. Elijah proclaimed the word of the Lord during one of the most critical periods of Old Testament history. And Elijah's story begins in 1 Kings chapter 17. There is no background given on Elijah's birth or his family, only that he is a Tishbite and of the inhabitants of Gilead. Elijah's name means the Lord is my God. As we see Elijah's ministry began after the split of the two nations into of the nation into two kingdoms. It was under one nation under King Saul, under King David, and under King Solomon. But after the death of Solomon, it split into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom, which is Israel, that included ten tribes, and the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Judea, or Judah, which included two tribes. So here when we begin chapter 17, it said King Elijah in chapter 1 of chap, uh, correct, chapter 17, verse 1, Elijah tells King Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then God tells Elijah to get away from there and to go to where he will tell him, told him where to go. Now, it had not rained for three and a half years, and all this time, King Ahab was looking for Elijah. And all this time, God was taking care of Elijah. Here you will find the story of the widow, well, how the ravens fed Elijah until the brook dried up. Then God sent him to the widow and, uh, and how Elijah being there, that her supply of flour and oil did not run out during the famine and how Elijah raised her son from the dead. Our Bible background is coming from 1 Kings chapters 18 through and 19 and Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 through 3. Our printed text is 1 Kings 18th chapter verse 5 through 18. Our lesson starts with Ahab and Obadiah and then Obadiah and Elijah, and then Elijah and Ahab. The announcement that Elijah made in chapter 17 about there, about there being, there would not be any rain was an insult to Ahab and Jezebel because of their worship of Baal. See, without water, nothing can live. And Baal was a fertility god. And they believed that he was in control of any control of anything to do with giving life, whether it's animal, plants, or human beings. But we know that it is Jehovah Jireh, Lord God, our provider, who is in control. And it is by his command that all things, nature, human beings, or animals, and circumstances that he has control over. 
So our lesson aim is to compare Elijah's response to speak to Ahab to that of Obadiah's response to report back to Ahab and gain a sense of Obadiah's concern when reporting Elijah's message to Ahab and act in boldness when speaking the word of God. Our key verse, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 18, the New Living Translation. I have made no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers, for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the image of Baal instead. Our outline are three outlines. The first one, God's providence. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 5 through 8. God's servant, Obadiah, verses 9 through 16. And God's prophet, Elijah, verse 17 and 18. In our first outline, God's providence. 1 Kings 18, verses 5 through 8. So here we start with a conversation between Eli between King Ahab and Obadiah. And because we know that God is in control, that this the God's providence of Elijah and Obadiah meeting did not happen haphazardly. So Obadiah and Elijah did not meet by coincidence. They met by God's purpose. So God is in control. And this is God's timely preparation for future events while providing protective and spiritual care. You see, Obadiah was with King Ahab. And King, this the two of them went out to went under the directive of Ahab to go find some grass and some water for the animals. So King Ahab went one way and Obadiah went another way. But it didn't happen by coincidence. So this text starts out talking about Ahab telling Obadiah to find some water and grass for his horses. Note that he had no concern about the people because he knew that horses, uh, without horses, a king could not protect his kingdom. So you see, it was all about Ahab. It was all about himself. So Ahab was the epitome of evil and often referred to as the king that made Israel sin because he led them to worship the idol Baal. The Bible describes Ahab as the king that did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. So you see, when God has intervened and God is making things happen, Obadiah and Elijah were traveling down the same path. So what do you do when you know that God has put someone in your path? God's servant, Obadiah, verses 9 through 16. So Obadiah here in today's lesson is not the author of the book of Obadiah. These are two different people. In verse 3 of chapter 18, it says that Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. And he worked in the king, he worked in King Ahab's administration as a governor, a mayor, or he was a top official. He was in charge of Abraham, Ahab's property or his household. So Obadiah feared the Lord, and he had done so since his youth. Fear of the Lord is a sign of wisdom. Obadiah's name means servant of the Lord. So as he meets with Elijah on the road, Elijah addresses Obadiah and tells him, Go tell your master that I'm here and I'm going to present myself to him. Well, uh, Obadiah 
then calls himself Elijah. When he replied back to Elijah, he called himself Elijah's servant. And that was to distance himself from any allegiance that Elijah may have thought he had to King Ahab. And also, he wanted to distance himself from any implied sin of idolatry. So as Obadiah is talking, and Elijah gave him that one directive, Obadiah comes up with this hypothetical situation and says that if you, you send me away, you know, I know that the Spirit of the Lord may carry you away to a place that I wouldn't know where and then King Ahab wouldn't able to be, would not be able to find you and he would kill me. So then he began to ask Eli Elijah. He said, now have you heard, you know, that what I've done that uh, I hid a hundred of God's prophets in two caves and fed them water and bread? So see, he thought telling Elijah this because he thought Elijah was punishing him. Because he surely thought that he should have arrested Elijah and brought bought Elijah to King Ahab versus going to King Ahab, just telling him what Elijah had said. But then Elijah reassured Obadiah and said that um, that. I will, as the as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah believed in what God's prophet said. Obadiah believed in God's power, not just his presence. So when was a time that fear of a hypothetical situation stopped you from acting or even believing? That is from God. Our third point. God's prophet Elijah. Verse 17 and 18. So when Elijah did meet with King Ahab. The first thing King Ahab said was. Uh, he said, is that you, O troubler of Israel? But you know, Elijah didn't back down in the face of Ahab's anger. He threw Ahab's accusations back at him, telling him that it was him, he and his fa father's, and his father's family were the real troublemakers. See, the famine had come because of the idolatrous practices that had been encouraged by Ahab's father. Ahab furthered those practices of promoting the worship to Baal, with the support, of course, of his wife Jezebel. So Elijah's courage demonstrates his confidence in the Lord Almighty. So Elijah knew that he nor the drought was the source of Israel's problem, but it was Ahab's and Israel's breaking of the covenant. See, any true prophet of the Lord would trouble people when he or she confronts them with the truth about their sinfulness and their need to repent. So again, I ask you to encourage you to read chapters 18 and 19 to learn of the victory Elijah had on Mount Carmel. So when condemned or mocked for following God's word, how should you respond? Or how do you respond? So wrapping up our spring quarter for 2021, prophets faithful to God's covenant. We are in unit one, faithful prophets. Today was Elijah, prophet of courage. The unifying principle was the bearer of bad news. Elijah was called a troubler. Are you a troubler? One who stands on the word of God, even when those around you stand against you? Or it's not popular for you to stand on the word of God. So I implore you to be bold and be strong. And know that the Lord God Almighty is with you everywhere you go. And remember, healthy things grow and growing things change. Are you growing and becoming more mature 
in the word of God or are you just growing old? Thank you and be blessed.